everybody, son, Ghost Roku here, and welcome to this review for WWE Hell in the Cell, because as Kofi Kingston said, you gotta say it that way or else it doesn't count, 2018, <laughs> but first, make sure to hit that subscribe button followed by hitting the notification bell so that way you are notified as soon as my content is released. Um, yeah, sorry guys that I did not release this review earlier this week, but I had so many things going on this week. Good things, of course, but so many things going on that I just did not have the time. So not only am I going to be giving you my thoughts on the show in this review, but I also can go ahead and give my thoughts on the aftermath from Raw and SmackDown uh, and just basically give you guys my overall thoughts on the storyline direction that WWE is taking after Hell in a Cell. Also, uh, this will be a solo audio review. Uh, I'll be going ahead and doing this by myself for the first time. Yeah, so um, the Man Triples are one, SMP, and the others who have usually joined me for these reviews, uh, they'll probably be back uh, sometime in the probably next reviews. We've got, like, what, three shows WWE is going ahead and advertising, <laughs> like, right now, like, crazy, right? Uh, so with that said in mind, uh, you guys, let me know how this solo review goes. I expect it would be a lot quicker since I can just go ahead and get my thoughts out and move right to the next one, you know, uh, as opposed to the usual discussion conversations that we have all right enough rambling and let's get on with the very first match of the pre-show the wwe tag team championship match featuring the champions the new day taking on the team of rusev d Sorry if I go ahead and blew your ears out there, but anyways, enough of the shenanigans, so uh, yeah, my thoughts on the match. So yeah, you basically got uh, Rusev and Aiden English taking on uh, Kofi Kingston and Big E. Uh, one of the highlights, actually before the match even begin, is uh, I love the little uh, mic battle they're having of trying to outdo one another with the... Mm, 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 you know, the mm, 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 where they're clearing the throat, and uh, you would have uh, Big E and Ever going like, mm, 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 and Rusev would be, I mean, uh, Aiden English was like, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I know I'm not doing it justice, but yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, and of course, Aiden English always great with the Rusev Day, um, you know, gimmick and stuff, uh, shake of, of singing and everything, the whole Rusev uh, shake of singing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the match was fine, it was a pretty good match for the pre show. Would have been nice to have it on the main card, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, the big highlights at the end of the match is where um, Big E launches Kofi Kingston uh, over the ropes, but Rusev kicks him, knocks him down, and Aiden English comes in with a DDT to the apron on Big E. And the big thing in story in this match is that when Big E, I mean, um, when Rusev actually has the match won, Aiden English tags himself in, and Rusev's like, what the heck, we had it won. And uh, eventually Rusev gets knocked down to the ground and uh, it comes down to Kofi and Aiden English. And Aiden English tries to finish off Kofi with Rusev's very own accolade submission. And uh, from there, Big E gets in the way, gets in the ring, and uh, he's get taken down once again by another matcha, matcha uh, kick uh, by Rusev. Uh, Machka! <laughs> yeah, kick by Rusev. And from there, this is when Kofi eventually breaks free because. Uh, Rusev comes in charging once again and Kofi throws him out of the ring and I like the ending sequence here you had Aiden English he goes to uh, attack uh, Kofi Kofi dunks out of the way so immediately when Aiden English uh, jump, goes into the ropes and is and propelled off them he is immediately met with a trouble in paradise one two three the new day win or retains the championship I'm all off right now <laughs> yeah they retain the title and continue on and um of course on the um smackdown um which i've recorded shortly after it aired um we see that rusev day has officially been broken up uh on smackdown with the united states championship match against rusev and nakamura and from there it looks like rusev is officially uh you know well he's pretty much babyface uh, for the way they've been presenting him but 
uh, Aiden English is officially healed, so it's going to be very interesting to see what this means going forward. Uh, and I thought it was a great performance by Lana and uh, Aiden English, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, the Rusev day is over. It's going to be interesting to see. I hope Aiden English goes pretty far, uh, you know, because I thought the, the guy has definitely some great talent. You know, when you break up the VOD villains, look what the guy, he's able to, you know, make himself uh, into something that got over with the crowd. And I think Rusev, you know, obviously he's been over so yeah uh, let's see what they do from here so let's move on to the main card all right so the first match of the main card is randy orton versus jeff hardy in a hell in a cell match and this was of course the very first time jeff hardy has ever competed inside hell in a cell on wwe tv programming you know whatever it's uh <laughs> whatever it is uh so this is one of those matches i really didn't think needed to be uh in hell in a cell but um Hey, it is what it is. Jeff Hardy wanted the match uh, from what I've been um, hearing in the reports. Um, I love this match. This was definitely one of the better Hell in a Cell matches uh, that we've had in recent years. I'm going to say this, though. The new Hell in a Cell, they painted it red. And, uh, you know, you guys know, uh, for those of you who've been following a long time, as an artist, uh, you know out there, red is a very dominant color. And in this particular case, I felt it was too distracting for the match. Just all this sea of red, you know. If it's not broken don't fix it. I, I felt that they really should have gone ahead and let the uh, Hell in a Cell say the, you know, traditional generic steel gray color, right? Because it takes away. It's, it's you know, it, it's less distracting. But uh, other than that, this match was good. I, I appreciate matches where, you know, they can't do the big giant bumps like they used to. Cell is much more taller and the thing about it is I love that they actually utilized Hell in a Cell, and it was pretty pretty violent, you know, by PGWWE standards. It was pretty violent uh, of a match, uh, and that's always good when it's actually, you know, living up to the name that there's actually hell going on in that cell. Uh, you had uh, Jeff Hardy dishing out a lot of the TLC stuff. Uh, you know, there's points where great improvision, uh, improvision I thought, uh, or in improving uh, where Jeff Hardy's belt ends up getting ripped, and Randy Orton just smacks the crap out of his belt, you know, he just takes him to the woodshed, as good old Jim Ross would say, uh, and, and then uh, Jeff Hardy eventually returned to favor and really weared Randy Orton's back out, uh, the, he did a uh, steel chair, he put a steel chair on Randy Orton's stomach and did a swan tom bomb, and I'm thinking right here all this time, like, man, <laughs> Jeff Hardy, don't kill yourself with your back, I mean, like, you got nothing left to prove, but uh, yeah, Jeff Hardy's still going out there, putting his body on the line, um, and, you know, I, I think Brian, uh, Brian Saxon even said that the last thing on Jeff Hardy's mind is uh, is his actual health uh, and everything. Uh, but, yeah, you had a lot of cool stuff, table spots. There's one part where the referee actually uh, pushed the table out and the fans were booing. <laughs> you know, they want their tables. Uh, but, yeah, you know, even Randy Orton was bleeding from the thigh. I think maybe a piece of the chair or some wood got got gashed in there. So, I mean, Randy Orton was, you know, <laughs> just bleeding from the back, the, the leg. Um, it was good stuff. Randy Orton was very methodical here and but it worked you know uh i thought the psychology of everything it it really all worked together uh and it, it definitely it's worth seeing the match jeff hardy and randy orton worked really hard um jeff hardy at the end of course he sets up a medium-sized ladder and then the big ladder and you know he it looks like he's got uh randy orton on the table and it looks like he's gonna jump over the ladder like he's done before but no he climbs up to the very you know started basically doing the monkey bar on the roof of the cell. So he's hanging from the roof of the cell. Now, I think I understand he's done this before in TNA Impact Wrestling where he swings back and forth and drops down to his opponent. So he's swinging back and forth, and he drops down, but no one is home. Randy Orton gets out of the way, and Jeff Hardy falls all but 15, 20 feet straight to the ground. Looks like he landed right on his shoulder through the table. That had to suck. I mean, seriously. Yeah, we all know wrestling is predetermined. Uh, there's a lot of improv based with it scripted but i i can guarantee you that hurt do, doing out we've never seen it and that's a spot i think i never yeah i've never seen that spot where someone's climbing from the roof of the cell and just drop down to the uh, to the to the canvas ouch uh the only thing about the spot i wish it was a little bit time better maybe at the second jeff hardy let go randy orton got out the way because it kind of looks silly it would look fine from the first camera angle but when they showed it from multiple camera angles uh you couldn't see because the first camera angle you just see jeff hardy dropping 
like, oh, where the heck did Randy go? The other ones show that Randy got out of the way and Jeff on his next swing just decided to let go and fall. <laughs> and I also thought it was hilarious at the end when Randy Orton is trying to go for the pin. He's like, referee, what are you doing? He's like, he's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. And he's like, the hell he's hurt. Do your job. Do your job. <laughs> and, and then he eventually, the referee counts it. One, two, three. And then Randy Orton wins. Um, and they didn't even play the music. So they really tried to play it off as something that was basically, how do you say, uh, they're, they're trying to make it more realistic. And I really like that. I like that they did that. That was really cool. Uh, but overall, yeah, I thought this was definitely a good Hell in a Cell match and the strongest Hell in a Cell match of the night. I'll have more to say about that later. Moving on to the next match. The SmackDown Women's Championship match. Champion Charlotte Flair defending the women's title against Becky Lynch. This storyline, so it started back in SummerSlam. You know, they had that one week where Becky Lynch... Uh, was, you know, um, basically, you know, trashing the fans, and then she stopped after that, and they, they basically took it in a direction where it's like Becky Lynch is just angry, you know, she's sort of basically being like a sore loser to her friend Charlotte, and... Charlotte is basically just trying to say, why are you mad? The, the you know, the better woman won, and, you know, I'll gladly give you a rematch. So there was a lot of cool stuff with the buildup, um, and I like the way they were portraying Becky as much more aggressive and everything, and the match itself was really good. A lot of great technical submission wrestling between more than, you know, two of the best, very best women wrestlers you've got in the company, and uh, it, this is definitely a really good match. Definitely one of, I think, some, some of their strongest matches matches um uh, i could put it right up there with that uh but yeah the, the match was good a lot of great counters i really like the psychology of becky lynch working on charlotte's arm because obviously her finishing move is the disarm her so why not uh it, it was really great and then in the finish of the match you have charlotte flair goes for the spear but basically on the way down before she can hit before uh becky lynch's back hits or, or, or whatever she reverses it into a pin one two three Becky Lynch wins, and she is our new WWE SmackDown Women's Champion. And I'm like, you know, oh, wow, it, it, shoot, it popped me because I, I'm going into this thing, and there's going to be some screwy finish that leads into the um, the um, Super Showdown in Australia. But, uh, yeah, Becky Lynch win, and I thought the aftermath on SmackDown uh, that they just showed uh, tonight as I'm doing this recording was uh, well done. <laughs> well done indeed. You know how she She's like telling like raise my hand or wrap it around my waist or she says no I'm just playing you know call me queen and uh and Charles just leaves and then she just says you bitch and, and she basically uh that's enough and she t attacks um uh Becky Lynch and I'm glad that they are not portraying Becky Lynch as uh you know some coward like uh, you know she's she's, she's uh, standing straight up and they're still not having her acknowledge the uh fan uh, uh, the fans it's almost like WWE sort of wants you he, they're trying trying to tell us you're supposed to boo this girl because she's being such a jerk and in the storyline she is but at the same time what can you do uh <laughs> the fans are loving it and i'm enjoying uh mean aggressive becky so uh the thing about celebrating this though is while it is a nice pop you never know with the way WWE books things nowadays, because when they book things like a, a wrestler who you think has been, you felt has been under you has been um, underutilized, and they finally get the championship, it's like, okay, are they getting the championship because they're gonna get the long reign they deserve, or are they just getting it for a month, two days, or the next day, or in Rey Mysterio's case, uh, back in 2011, uh, the next couple of hours? <laughs> so you never know. So it's like. You have to really see and wait for it to play out, and if they give her a long reign, it's like, oh, okay, cool, th this worked out. Uh, so yeah, you gotta see. And I was gonna say too, um, I I actually say, stated this when I called in uh to uh Aaron Riff of NoDQ.com. He did a live stream called Call In, and I had mentioned about how the interesting thing about the storyline, I feel the real heel is Paige because I understand she wanted in the storyline, she wants to uh you know get one back at uh Carmella for her attitude, but why do it? at the at the uh, the suspense of Becky what did Becky do you know uh why not uh say that uh she's gonna have to face uh Charlotte will just have to face the winner or or something like that why well, put in a triple threat match but uh yeah that's the only thing about the storyline um and they didn't bring this up either with Paige and or we had the 
team BC, PCB in the ring, and they didn't bring that up. So, uh, but yeah, I'm glad uh, Becky Lynch is rightfully the champion now, and hopefully this is a plan for a long reign as champion because I definitely think um, they can always put the title back on Charlotte uh, closer to WrestleMania, and I think the real money in Charlotte versus Ronda, which is the rumored WrestleMania 35 main event, the real money is Charlotte as a heel against a babyface, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Now, moving on to the next match, the WWE Raw Tag Team Championship match featuring The Shield represented by Seth Rollins and Dean Mother Effin Ambrose <laughs> uh, taking on uh, two thirds of the pack, not the wolf pack, but just the pack, uh, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. So you guys know, since it, it's felt like Ever since before WrestleMania 34, the Raw Tag Team, basically ever since they had Braun Strowman come out there and destroy the entire Raw Tag Team division, it, it felt like this division hasn't had credibility, you know, uh, uh, and don't get me wrong, the Woken Warrior stuff was good, and I was very happy to see the B-Team get their, um, to get their moment, but, like, the way they presented the B-Team, as opposed to these guys who were seen as low, you know, low, low card talent uh work themselves up to showing that they're big time talent they kept they presented these guys as if they were jokes and they were just basically lucky to get the titles and you know it really i think in many fans hurt the prestige of the raw tag team championships however this match i felt corrected a lot of that this was an incredible tag team match it used a lot of old school wrestling uh tactics from the hills and mcintyre mcintyre and uh ziggler you know working over the baby face trying to build up to the hot tag like there's one point where um i think seth rollins is nearly about to get the tag on dean ambrose ziggler gets in the ring distracts the referee gets out of the ring so when dean goes him exact tag the referee's like no no i didn't see it i didn't see it and meanwhile mcintyre and ziggler works on uh seth rollins in the back it, it was really cool there was nice psychology parts. Like, I liked how uh, Dean Ambrose, uh, I mean, Seth Rollins goes for a suicide dive to the outside when McIntyre and Ziggler walk to the side of the ring, but they uh, catch him, you know, because they see the guy coming. But what they didn't suspect was Dean Ambrose, who comes in with another suicide dive. And I thought that was, like, really cool. He had some nice spots like Seth Rollins, man, always burning it down. <laughs> when he did the, um, he did the, um, there's a, a part, like, I think, he, uh, Ziggler goes for a DDT and in midair uh, Seth Rollins just with pure strength hoises uh, Ziggler up and twists him down you know for the uh, what was it the little sit down um like the reverse suplex sit down power bomb. I forget the move right now. Please forgive me, guys. Uh, but you guys know the, the know the uh, spot most likely. Uh, what it, what it's called. Um, he does it after he does the suplex off the top rope, and uh, that actually leads me into the finish of this match, which I thought was really good. It was just incredible action, back and forth, lots of counters. It just definitely go see this match, guys. But in the end, Seth Rollins, you know, he goes for the big suplex that he then turns into uh the other uh you know the move that he just did again. I forget. I'm yeah, sorry, guys. I forget right off the top of my head. But uh, before he could land that, uh, Drew McIntyre gets in, hits the Claymore, and Ziggler basically just falls right into the pin. One, two, three. They retain the titles. Uh, so this obviously is going to set up more later on for the Super Showdown um, as we talk. So, you know, just amazing. And Ziggler and, and, uh, and, um, and Seth Rollins had another really good match, I thought, on Monday Night Raw, you know, uh, as they tried their best to sell the injuries uh, uh, that we'll talk about that sustain later on in the main event but definitely guys go out of your way to see this raw tag team match you know this may have been now that i looked at it this may be the match of the night this was <laughs> this was incredible and it's finally great to see this type of quality uh match or you know with characters and the storyline build up uh being presented once again in the raw tag team division for the championships now moving on to the next match the wwe championship match 
<sighs> Mitt carting the show again. But hey, when you're getting all that big money from Fox, right? That is what it is. And now they're acknowledging the universal title as the uh, most prestigious prize or whatever, the richest prize now in the WWE. It is what it is. But thankfully, that doesn't stop AJ Styles and Samoa Joe from going out there and tearing the house down. This match was awesome. You know, just I love their SummerSlam match and I thought off this match topped it uh the build-up to the storyline you know a lot of people had mixed results feeling like it's too overproduced and i agree samoa joe aj styles it doesn't take that much but uh overall i thought the uh <laughs> night night aj was pretty funny and uh, samoa joe definitely is uh doing a tremendous job with it uh i like that aj started this match off really hot you know coming in well in at joe just like that's exactly what he did because i mean come on someone comes at your family like the way samoa joe is you're not gonna you you're the first thing you're gonna do is want to do a tie up uh hey let's test the strength you know um so yeah the match was hard hitting back and forth a lot of great action you know uh it just just really good stuff here and uh you know from you know counter to counter uh it's just really good action back and forth um and i was basically gonna say uh i don't remember all the spots uh specifically um because i'm just kind of going off my initial thoughts here but uh the biggest thing that they did here in the ending sort of uh which reminded me of the SummerSlam 2015, uh, the SummerSlam 2015, um, it was the SummerSlam 2015, uh, main event ending between The Undertaker and, uh, Brock Lesnar, so what happens is Joe gets the Coquita Clutch on, uh, Coquita Clutch, Clutch, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that, uh, on AJ Styles, and AJ Styles rolls up, you know, back, you know, for, he, he gets his legs back, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna go for the old Bret Hart and Steve Austin Survivor Series 1996 finish, referee counts a 1-2-3, I'm like, oh, okay, but then, you know, Joe's angry. He's like, you know, count him, count him. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So uh, they show the replay. It took forever to show the replay, so I didn't know what was taking on. But they finally showed it, and there you clearly see AJ taps uh, towards um, Samoa Joe's rib area. So now Joe has a, a legit claim for a rematch, and they're going to have that at the Super Showdown. So um, I like the finish you keep the title on AJ but you don't make Samoa Joe look weak it, it, that basically says that yeah Joe could do it he actually got the champion to tap out and it makes Joe look stronger and I really like on Smackdown how J Joe was just furious you know no more bedtime or night night AJ no more calling out his family like okay you know what I'm done playing the games because you know this this mother after he's like this mother after he tapped out and you know it you know I lost it so I, I liked it it looks like they're gonna go in that more serious direction we're talking about because as it should at this point so uh definitely uh i think aj lee and uh and samoa joe i'm really loving this rivalry really loving the matches a lot more better like i said than the the aj nakamura feud we had so uh definitely looking forward to seeing more of this uh i just don't know if samoa joe's really gonna win the championship because i think they're gonna want to keep aj the longest reigning champion just so he can surpass cm punk so i think at the very least uh he He'll probably lose a championship after Royal Rumble 2019. That being said, uh, moving on to the next match. Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. Um, hmm. So the thing about this match was Daniel Bryan and The Miz uh, basically carried the match in terms of in-ring action. Whereas Maurice and Brie was mostly shenanigans, and we've seen a lot more from Brie recently when she's, uh, you know, despite the uh, the suicide dives that she bought, you know, she has to get off the ring rust. It is what it is, you know. Um, you know, I, I think people could cut her a little slack um, there, but... The thing is, Maris, I, I was just wondering, is she in ring shape or, or something? Because the reason why I wonder, I noticed, I don't, don't think she even did one move in this match. Um, So, you know, and same thing like back last year when I was at WrestleMania 33 Live, Maris didn't do a lot there, nor a lot in that. So it's like, 
they're putting her back in the ring, but she's not really doing much wrestling, and I remember seeing a lot more from her when she was wrestling, um, so I, I don't know if, if if it's an issue, she just needs more time to get back in the ring shape, or, or, or what's going on, um, but I felt like if that is the case, if, if, if Maris just is not capable of being able to wrestle um, right now like the way she did before in her first run with WWE, um, I felt the shenanigans, they worked fine for what they were, um, uh, but overall, it, it was decent, okay match. Um, but uh, I, I felt, uh, like I said, it was Mi it was mostly Miz and, and Daniel Bryan keeping it together. And in the end, uh, Maris, when she finally does get tagged in, uh, she ends up getting a roll-up pin on Brie Bella, one, two, three, and Miz and Maris quickly retreat with their victory. Um, yeah, it was all right. I was I was actually hyped for this match, but it didn't end up being uh, what I was hoping it to be uh, and everything. Uh, I guess maybe I was expecting more in ring wise from uh, what we got with Maris, but uh, that wasn't the narrative they were they were telling about. But uh, overall, um, you know, the four of them I thought did decent enough for the match and everything. Uh, that being said, uh, this now moves us towards the Super Showdown, which is going to be the Miz versus Daniel Bryan with the winner getting a WWE championship opportunity so this almost guarantees that we're gonna have a new direction maybe they'll go with Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles at Survivor Series um 2018 or maybe they'll do the Miz versus uh AJ Styles so it's gonna be really interesting to see exactly where they go moving forward all right moving on to the next match the WWE Raw Women's Championship match, Rowdy Ronda Rousey with Natalya in her corner defending the Women's Championship against Alexa Bliss with Mickey James and Alicia Fox in her corner. This match, I kind of felt like... This is the match we should have got at SummerSlam. Like even from a from a logical standpoint, and I know that doesn't always go into the WWE booking. There's a lot of logic holes that we the fans can can pick out, right? Um, but the thing about this is that I'm surprised. Like you would have, why would Alicia Fox? I mean, not Alicia Fox, but why would Alexa Bliss have her backup come out for this match, but not at the SummerSlam match? But Whatever they they um they did the plot device in there of uh, Ronda's ribs being injured so that way they can make the match a lot more competitive. And that being said, uh this is definitely was a much better match and it was more competitive. Alexa Bliss, you know, they had it they had to really take it to Ronda and Ronda did a tremendous job at selling. Um and it definitely had its high impact moments. Um and of course I thought at the end uh with Alexa Bliss grabbing Ronda Rousey and uh and basically. Basically, you know, where Ronda looks like she's almost out of it, and Lex is like saying, you know, she's about to win. She's like, grr, and then Ronda gets back up, and then uh, in a moment <laughs> that reminded me of uh, WrestleMania. What was that? WrestleMania 29, where the Undertaker and uh, CM Punk had that moment where Undertaker rose up, and CM Punk had that hilarious look on his face. So yeah, Ronda goes like, grr, and uh, Alexa's terrified, and she does another uh, Juco throw. And from there, she gets her into the arm bar. And uh, there you go. I wonder why Ronda Rousey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ronda taps Alexa Bliss out immediately. I think even before her, before even Ronda even hit the ground, Alexa's already tapping. I wonder why she bends the elbow uh, forward like that as opposed to extending the arm. Um, I, I was thinking Ronda would be able to do that. Just, you know, you have to apply a lot less pressure so you don't break the arm. But uh, yeah, if anybody knows why, uh, please let me know in the comment section uh but other than that uh yeah it was a good match and a nice finish to it i like i said i just felt this is the match that should have happened at SummerSlam. uh so once again ronda rousey really uh impressing you know very impressive what she's been able to do um so now we're going to move towards the uh super showdown where it's going to be her and the bella twins teaming up against the riot squad and of course there's the rumor match for evolution that it's going to be nikki bella versus 
versus Ronda Rousey, and I'm like, mm, I don't know exactly if I want to, you know, when I think of dream matches, Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey is not exactly one of my dream matches I've thought about, but uh, yeah, it is what it is, but we it hasn't been confirmed yet, we gotta see how the storylines play out here. Uh, now, moving on to the next match, which is the main event for the WWE Universal Championship Roman Reigns defending the Universal title against Braun Strowman with Mick Foley as the special guest referee inside Hell in a Cell. You know, Mick Foley being added to this match was, I thought, pretty random, but I'm like, okay, there might be a reason here. Um, and as it turns out, he was pretty much just there for decoration. And, <laughs> oh boy, let, let's get started on this main event. You know, I really enjoyed this show. I thought everything was pretty, pretty solid, you know. Uh, and this match... I'm being honest, compared to the matches that Braun Strowman... Well, first, let's talk about the storyline build-up to this. They turned Braun Strowman heel, so that way it, it seemed they can hopefully take distraction off of Roman Reigns because they they could they didn't want Roman Reigns getting cheered more. You know, it, it's just a mess, and it, it's, a, it's a shame. It, it really is that they're doing that with one of the guys who's you know, organically over like Braun Strowman and this is this is what they did. Uh and and of course, like I said, when you're getting the Fox deal, you've got the what NBC Universal deal and you know they're getting another big show and a big amount of money with the Saudi Arabia show coming up. Uh you can do things like this because it's all about the stock in WWE. It's all about the investors and, and that money they're getting, you know. Uh it's not, you know, it's just not about, you know, the fans any it just seems like it's not about the fans, you know, any more in terms of like they they're, they're not living and dying by you know the fan the money that the fans put in it it feels like it's what's being generated with the companies that invest the money and everything so um <clears throat> It, 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 it it's it's sad you know um it is what it is but that being said um this match so I, I thought it didn't really to me it, it it was one of the weakest matches that I felt Roman and Braun Strowman have had just from a fan speaking from a fan perspective looking at it I thought their other matches that they had was much more better more exciting this one yeah but it had some it had its moments you know like Braun Strowman like Roman Reigns there's a part where he tries to run around one corner of the ring to the other corner of the ring and then Braun Strowman hurls the the uh what's it called the announcer table at him um i mean not the announced table the uh the um still steps at him and basically whacks roman out there were some funny moments where mick foley i think he botched and what happens is i, I think roman did kick out at two but mick foley counted three anyway and the referees try to cover up say well you know mick foley's not a full-time referee and braun Strowman. i don't know if it was shooting on foley but he he's getting angry and he's yelling like and he's like uh you know that was three that was three and i think foley maybe made another box where he's like foley you're killing me here and he's telling Roman, like why don't you stay down just stay down you dummy you know um so it, it had its moments for sure um that I did think were entertaining, but overall, I, I just I just felt like this match didn't live up to the um to the uh to what their other match previous matches were in 2017. Um, so here's where it gets really weird. Roman Reigns does a spear to Braun Strowman through a table that, that that's set up in the corner, and if what felt like what 10 15 minutes this completely takes them out they are they both are gone and it's weird because after all the stuff we've seen braun Strowman and roman reigns endure uh this spot takes them out okay i even saw a funny meme that said mick foley they were trying to poke fun saying that mick foley got thrown off the cell through the cell roof and still finished the match these guys uh, uh get uh you know roman does a spear through a table and they're out for the rest of the match like okay <laughs> um now with that being said in mind you have dean ambrose and seth Rollins come out because before that you have the um the rest of the pack come out so they came out to the feel their to defend their shield brethren um and this is the weird thing because i felt like when it came to this match this match 
best the best parts of this match came for people who weren't even booked in the match so they start brawling on top of the cell and for what because you know for whatever reason Ziggler he couldn't escape from the um ring so I, he couldn't escape from the crowd so I guess he tried to climb up the cell and maybe try and climb up the other way but uh they start brawling on the four on top of it and uh you know it's always uh yeesh you know when they do a bump on top of the cell but thankfully it looks like this is much more better reinforced than the one that uh Mick Foley and Taker win you guys out there remember the attitude there when Mick Foley and Taker were um were walking on that cell before they even did the big spot uh when their both their feet hit one part of the cell it, it break through and like oh my gosh that had to that, that had to it'd be a heart racer for them so they well, recreate the 20 i think the 2014 hell in the cell spot between dean ambrose and seth rollins where ziggler and seth rollins climb on the side and uh it did look great it looked better i thought than that one because the camera angle was so close that when they both fell down man you can see how high they were falling down and boom they the the table just blew up and exploded so it was a great looking spot right um so it's carnage everywhere and then we hear brock lesnar's theme um picked uh brock lesnar's theme hits now um i was like i said i was busy all weekend so i didn't know of any spoilers so i i guess i heard that later on it was spoiled already that brock was going to be there so this was a complete shock and surprise to me and and uh, Brock came in like a beast. This is this is finally something that uh, outdid, I think, maybe Kane ripping the door off the hinges. Brock Lesnar kicks the door down. So they had the door gimmick where Brock Lesnar is able to kick it down and he throws it. And Brock, you know, he gets in there and he beats the crap out of Braun Strowman and uh, Roman Reigns with the broken pieces of tables and everything. I thought he was going to take that door and whack the crap out of him with it. So he picks up um, Braun Strowman, does the F5 there and you know this just really want, I just want to point out just this shows you how freakishly uh, gifted Brock Lesnar is in terms of his athleticism you know obviously with the USADA to, um, with the USADA um, testing pool going on um, and you know I think he's being tested like almost what three times a month almost maybe weekly uh, so you know Brock Lesnar you know and he's coming up clean isn't all natural now apparently so with that said in mind you know this really goes to show you just how amazing strength uh, the amazing strength Brock Lesnar has you know so for any people out there that thinks that you know Brock Lesnar some steroid freak and that's why he's got his stream yeah, no Brock Lesnar is a naturally gifted athlete uh, and he proved that right here uh, as he always does uh, and Brock Lesnar he then goes ahead and does the F5 on uh with Roman Reigns on top where he throws him on top of Braun Strowman and like I said these guys were basically done so I don't know what exactly about this logically why this this that that one spot took him out uh when we've seen it so many times and we've seen him go through much worse and the referee basically calls this a no contest it is called a no contest and that's how the hell in cell pay-per-view goes off and we eventually find out that brock lesnar is going to now take on roman reigns and braun Strowman in a triple threat match that will be for the universal championship at the next saudi arabia show which will be called the crown jewel um yeah this match was pretty overbooked and like i said the best parts of the match came from people who weren't even booked in the match and apparently the story is they didn't want brock or braun to take um to take any big bumps and that this was actually planned and not last minute or so i, I don't know this was this was shenanigan city <laughs> that's what this was this was shenanigan city and uh, yeah i wasn't feeling this main event i felt like everything but the main event was like you know it was a pretty good show and the main event here was like eh, what this is how they booked it I'm like okay yeah um so yeah i, I really wasn't it, it was just shenanigan city what, what can i say i mean the, the action the action parts look great but overall this it, it's a say it's a shame that that, that this that that it had to go down like this. Like Braun Strowman doesn't isn't is unsuccessful at cashing in. I don't know when or if Braun Strowman's getting a championship because obviously they're gonna want to keep this title on Roman Reigns for a long time. Um 
yeah, it's just unfortunate. That that is what it is. So yeah, I, um, I felt like everything other than the main event though, it was pretty good to show. I uh, wish the main event would have been constructed better, uh, story wise, or, or even they didn't go this route turning Braun Strowman heel. But like I said, when you got the big money deals that are coming WWE's way. That is what it is. So, with that said in mind, guys, that wraps it up for my review for WWE Hell in a Cell 2018. And uh, I can definitely tell, um, basically going close to like 40 minutes here, uh, I definitely get through these reviews a lot quicker. You guys definitely let me know in the comments section below. Uh, for those of you who have been listening to all my WWE reviews, because um, they are basically filler content here until I can release my upcoming short film, Battle Deception, uh, let me know uh, how do you like it do you like uh, me just going on right here and just giving my initial thoughts straight through the whole show or do you like having the more discussions um usually when i have like guests such as either steve-o matt dillingham the man triple zero one or smp on where we all break down and give our discussions individually and everything so definitely let me know um but i would definitely will most likely be having those guys back obviously um for the um for the uh reviews and everything it's just this was uh kind of a lot of stuff going on this weekend so with that said in mind guys i hope you enjoy uh, we will definitely be back with a review for WWE Super Showdown and then Evolution and then the Crown Jewel and then Survivor Series. Good <laughs> gosh, man. Re all these pay-per-views that they are advertising at once. Man, you know, you guys, I know you guys out there probably believe less is more. But with that said in mind, guys, I'm going to end now with my plugs. So, if you obviously are a fan of WWE or professional wrestling, we'll be doing more audio reviews like this for big events that you can listen to as you go about your everyday life. Also, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, Shonen Manga, or anime adapted from Shonen Manga, make sure to check out my upcoming short film, Battle of Deception, as it's based on those types of genres. I currently have lots of videos such as the teaser trailer and the behind the scene interview videos right here on my channel, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified as soon as I release more content content regarding Battle of Deception, Dragon Ball, and even WWE. And make sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Instagram, both at Sun Goshoku. All links will be in the description below. Take care!